having us this morning. Glad you're here. We have a special treat. Yesterday, uh, several of us were able to gather together and do, do the four-mile walk. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer um, to uh, raise awareness and support for the work of the hands uh, with uh, Sean's going to tell us a lot more about their work and what they're endeavoring to do. Uh, but uh, uh, Sean and Judge is with us this morning from Money Hands. Uh, we have to coordinate that with Doug. Big appreciation to Doug for, for coordinating that on our end and getting that all set up. And so, in just a minute, Sean's going to come up and he's going to uh, speak with us during our Bible study lesson. Uh, before he does, just introduce you to Doug. He lives in the Nashville area, attends at the Echo Hills Congregation. Uh, is that in? Good. Good. Let's fill the Goodlettsville. address, but it's almost now. I don't know. Nashville, Goodlettsville. <laughs> that, that's on the air. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he and his wife Kristen and their son Michael live there, and they are due a daughter in August. Yes, yeah, August. He is, so, uh, so we're definitely, uh, you know. I know he's looking forward to that, he and his wife, and, and Michael, and so uh, we're so thankful to have him here with us. I've known John for a long time, uh, so, uh, so I won't take any more of your time, John. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. It is, a, it is a small world. Brian and I knew each other back in the youth ministry circle in the, in the middle Tennessee area, and... Uh, you know, you see names and you think, oh, yeah, there's, there's a Brian Hall in Sanford, North Carolina, but you don't think that could not be the same Brian Hall, and lo and behold. So it's just amazing how small the world really is. Um, in a second, we're going to kind of do a, a two-fold thing this morning. I'm going to quickly take you through some of the different ministries that Healing Hands does. Just an overview so you can understand. A lot of times people hear about Healing Hands and they know about Magi or they know about Walk for Water. And then they think those are two separate things, or maybe they hear about one or the other, and I'm going to let you guys kind of see kind of what we do. And then we're going to look at why we walked yesterday. What was the reason we walked? Was it for exercise? Was it for, for fun? Uh, and we'll look at that. And then we're going to close it out with, yesterday we wore a shirt that said, Hope Full, and we're going to tie that into a Bible lesson this morning. So you're going to get a TV commercial some good pictures, and a good Bible lesson. So it's all, it's all part of the fun. So this is Healing Hands International real quick. First thing up here is you see a lady in a garden. If you're going to change the world, as far as it talk about physical, the two things that we've got to provide for people are food and water. Something we don't think about here is food and water. It's available to us all the time. Since I've been here, I've gotten to enjoy ice cream at Yarborough's. I've had good meals. I've had breakfast. Don't even think about it. As a matter of fact, where I was staying, I passed probably at least 30 restaurants in a mile. Some of them were tiny. Some of them were weird. Some of them were from Peru. Some of them were, I don't even know what they were, a hibachi that looked like it was a Sonic. Uh, this well, the, the craziest thing was a hibachi with chicken wings. That one threw me off a little bit. Uh, last night I ate at Ron's, Ron's or Rod's Barn. That's a, a unique experience. It got me some fried chicken. But we have that stuff available to us. And so Healing Hands has a ministry called Hunger to Harvest. And that's where we teach people a simple thing called drip irrigation to use what they have to compost than to use that to grow food with very little water. So if you live in a part of the world where you don't have a lot of water, could you imagine trying to grow food without water? Does anybody in here like to garden? We got, we got one gardener. I know that if Doug was in here, he'd raise his hand because he was talking yesterday about, about growing stuff in his backyard. But it'd be kind of impossible to grow food without water, would it not? So you're in a part of the world that doesn't have access to water. It rains some of the time. It rains not part of the time. So we teach drip irrigation, and drip irrigation, if you look in the picture, you can kind of see these little black lines running through there, and it's called our raised bed, and this is not anything that Healing Hands came up with, this is very much part of people that know agriculture. Raised bed, though, is where you 
plant your things along the, the drip tape and there's a little bit of water that comes out. And so you fill up a five gallon bucket with water, the water seeps out and you can grow food. At first that sounds like it doesn't work until I realized in Nashville in the middle of summer, kind of like it is here, it gets very hot. In the middle of July and August, I've watched food grow in Nashville where we've done demonstration gardens with that little bit of water every single day. And so we do hunger to harvest, and our goal is to um, really train them on uh, how to grow food, how to store food, and then how to even make a living from what they have and, and leftovers from feeding their family. Now, this is something that maybe you are familiar with. Doug said that last year you all joined on the Magi Project thing. Did any of you get to participate in that, or am I just... This is the result. Your box ends up in a child's hand. And it's interesting. So I was telling Doug this story yesterday. So Magi, if you look at the box, it says m.a.g.i. Which stands for making a godly impact. And you're asking, why don't you just call it Magi? Does anybody know what, where Magi probably came from before? So that's an old term we hear in the Bible, right? The Magi. But that's a word that nobody understands today. And a couple of years ago... Actually, it's been a long time ago. It's been several, I'm aging too fast. Uh, our boss down in Texas had ordered Magi boxes for their office, got a shipment of them in, those boxes you see, and the, the company calls us, hey, your Maggie boxes are ready. He's like, Maggie boxes? No, no, it's Magi boxes. He said, oh, well, okay, we'll get them. So he goes home, and he's talking to his son, who his son at the time was eight years old. He said, people just don't understand Magi. We need to come up with an acronym. And he said, Dad, duh. Making a godly impact. And since then, we've put that there. And so those boxes, as you know, are filled with little things like hygiene products, toys, an outfit, a pair of flip-offs, basic stuff that we can go down to the dollar store and get as many as we want. But to them, for the first time, they might have got their own pair of new flip-flops. For the first time, maybe they have their own toothbrush. Maybe uh, the rubber bands, this one cracks me up. The rubber band you see around the box that we put on, a company donates those rubber bands to us. Uh, in Honduras, the kids, the boys would use those as slingshots. Flashlights. This cracks me up. You know those little flashlights you can get there about this long? I was in Honduras back in the early, uh, it's probably been 10 years ago, and uh, we were up on this mountain, and they were going to be doing a gospel meeting. Their generators were running, getting ready to put the lights on so you could hear the speaker. And uh, the sun's going down, and we're, I'm playing soccer with some kids over to the side, on the side of a, literally on the side of a mountain. I'm like, okay, we got to stop. It's getting dark. No, no, no. They whip out the flashlights, and they stick them in their mouth, and they start running around. And I was like, okay, I'm out. I'm going to go off the side of the mountain. I'm done. And so the Magi box is one of the ways that we have a way to make an impact. This is our Women of Hope ministry. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but the world runs on the power of the ladies. They're the, the backbone of this, of this society. And when a mom can't make a living, it's a burden on her because she can't support her family. But they have a lot of talents, they just don't have the resources. So the Women of Hope equips ladies with the skills, the resources, the training in order to start up some kind of business. And this happens to be a bakery that you see these two ladies standing outside of. Another thing we have in Ghana is some ladies making shea butter. The actual shea nut is in Ghana. They process that, they send it over here. Uh, some ladies make baskets, some make bags, clothes, jewelry. Uh, in Mozambique, they take flip-flops and they punch them out with little things. And it makes a colorful, uh, really neat necklace. They use what they got. Some of them even take in and buy clothes in bulk and then sell them. Uh, whatever it is, but Healing Hands empowers them with the training, the equipment. Maybe that's a sewing machine. Maybe that's a uh, stuff for their bakery. Maybe that's... Uh, the processing machine for the shea butter. Some make peanut butter. You name it, we empower them through small business loans, teaching Christian business principles. And as one gets done, then we teach them to give back so that some more people can do that. And so it's, a, it's not just a handout, it's a hand up, as we like to say. This is interesting. Probably why is there a five-gallon bucket on the screen? The words are written in Ukrainian. Have hope. I know by now you're familiar with what's going on in Ukraine, right? It's not a natural disaster, but it, would you consider it a disaster, what's going on? 
Healing Hands likes to respond to disasters. Uh, mainly you hear of international disasters like earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, droughts. But then there's cases like Ukraine or back several years ago, the Ebola crisis. Um, and you look, at, you look at these things. And so what Healing Hands has been doing in response, I want to kind of update you with the Ukraine situation is we partner. So Healing Hands is very big about partnering with other organizations and other church mission points around the world. We don't have people in every single country around the world. But there are a lot of church works going on around the world. And so in Ukraine, we reached out to our connections and said, okay, how can we help? How can we partner with you? And so they said, hey, one of the things we did years ago was called a family bucket. And so these buckets, and actually we've sent out 8,000 of these buckets already that were filled. It's kind of like a Magi box, but imagine putting in there things that would help a family that has fleed from their home. It is now staying across in another country with a family. You know, at one point, people were getting on trains and riding out of Ukraine into Poland, and they're arriving in Poland with nowhere to go, and people there, loving people, were standing there saying, we can take three. We can take four. Well, imagine now that family doesn't have the resources to help that family, so these are buckets that can help. And so we've sent 8,000 over. Actually, the first couple of containers have arrived because they go by ship. They take a while, and now... In Ukraine, in Poland, in Romania, those buckets are going to be helping people. Another way we were able to respond, and Healing Hands looks at responding to a disaster in a lot of different ways. One, we want to do immediate aid. But we also know that when a disaster comes and goes. So Ukraine's a little different because we don't know when it's going to end. But imagine an earthquake or a hurricane. There's always a time of disaster, but then there's the time of rebuilding, right? Right? And so Healing Hands wants to give, give aid when it's now and also look to the long term. And so that's part of our goal with Ukraine is to wait long term. But here's some of the things we've been able to do uh, working through Christians over in that area. We've been able to provide food where we've sent money over. They've gone shopping and then delivered the goods, medicine, medical supplies, baby food. Uh, and these things are purchased by uh, people and then they're taken to like refuge centers, churches, meal kitchens, and different places like that. Uh, and we've been working in multiple parts of Poland, Romania, Croatia, Moldova, and Belarus, and a little bit in Ukraine. Uh, we purchased a vehicle to transport people back in the very beginning. They would take this vehicle from Poland, drive in with supplies into Ukraine, and then as they were going back out of Ukraine, they would take people. So working with a church there... Um, and right now we have two of our staff in, U- in the Ukraine area. They're not in Ukraine. They've been in Romania and in Poland and making more connections. And as of yesterday, I just got an email or a text message last night from our president. He said, this weekend we just committed to funding all the equipment and food supplies for the church in Sopot, Poland, to feed and help care for refugees. They basically didn't have enough of the equipment needed to cook, but they were doing as best they could to feed the people. And now we're able to get them the resources, the equipment they need, uh, so they can continue to serve hot plates. So we are working in different ways to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I love this bucket, though, because uh, in a little bit, we're going to talk about what does it mean to have hope. And I want you to think about that. Don't say it out loud, but I want you to think about what does it mean to have hope and what does that mean to you? And then this was one of my favorite pictures, one of the the local uh, Christian schools in the Middle Tennessee area. Uh, they filled buckets, and the kids wrote little messages, and then they prayed over their buckets. And it just love seeing people come together to help others. All right, so yesterday, if you were at the walk, you got a cool shirt that on the front said, Hope Full. This is not a misspelling, okay? This is not, hey, Sean, you need to learn how to spell. It means yesterday, and what Walk for Water has been doing this year, is filling people with hope. So I want you to think about that as we continue here in a second. But yesterday, some of you probably came out, and this is how you're feeling, strong. Vance, I'd say you were feeling strong yesterday. You came out, you're fired up. This is how some of you felt, all right, as you walked. For some of you, you probably were like, what did I get myself into about the second lap in? We were over at the Kiwanis Family Park, right by that giant water park where um, just a great place, and we were doing four laps in that nice area. 
And some of us might have been like, what did I get myself into? But the thing that happened yesterday, and sorry I don't have pictures from yesterday. I didn't get with Doug to get the pictures. But um, we all smiled at the end because we realized that we made a difference. And you're saying, well, why did you walk yesterday? Oh, by the way, this is from last year. This might be my favorite picture. Hopefully all of you, whether you were there or not there yesterday, will walk around with some pride and say, our congregation does walk for water. This little kid right here, I love it. He was so excited to have a shirt on last year that he goes into all my slides now. But here you go. This is why we walked yesterday. You got up this morning. Your family needs water. Guess who's going out? Probably the mom. In this picture, it's two guys. Probably the mom, but probably not even the mom. It's the daughter. But they're going to go get water. And this situation's extreme, but this is not far-fetched of a reality. Dry season hits. Water's not available. You've got to dig down. And you can see what's amazing in this dark picture. The very bottom is the water they're getting. And there's a guy holding on to a root system to help his partner, friend, brother, then get down in there to get the water. This morning, what was, your, what was your hardship this morning for water? Hardship in my hotel was the fact that the knob doesn't work right, and I couldn't get it to turn to either where it was ice cold or burning hot. Don't know why. I should have said something as I left because somebody's going to get burned. And I mean by hot, I mean like scalding hot. But that's a hardship. I figured it out. It took me a couple of seconds. Oh, no. Maybe your hardship this morning for water was your water pressure was low. Maybe in the winter your pipes froze up a little bit and you didn't have hot water. We don't understand, but I can guarantee you this, the water that you got going out of your, your faucet this morning was clean, and you did not walk very far, did you? I could be wrong unless somebody had to walk down five blocks across to their neighbor's house to take a shower. Anybody in that situation? All right. I better not say I, I know for a fact. My luck, somebody would raise their hand and say, well, actually, I walk five miles every day. But this is a reality. If you look to the left of the picture and to the right of the picture, that is what would be a normal river bed in rainy season. But you can see in a dry season, it gets very, very difficult. There was a community, and I mentioned this yesterday, to walk where the riverbed dried up so much that they had to walk 12 miles, 10 miles, 12 miles to the nearest river to get their water. Now, let me ask you this. Is there a river nearby or a lake? Anywhere in this area? Anybody like to drink out of it? Is anybody proud enough to say that, hey, Sanford water, Lee County water is the best water in America, it's the cleanest? Is anybody taking that? Taking that? I mean, I've heard, I know people have pride about their community, but how many of you do you go down there and drink out of that river or lake? Why wouldn't you drink out of that river or lake? It'd make you sick, probably. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to find out. You, got, you guys test it out and let me know the effects. This picture's in Ghana. Great photo, horrible picture. Captures why we walked yesterday. But there is good news. Let me tell you this. In this picture right here, I was talking with Doug yesterday after lunch, and, and this picture right here really capsulates somebody. What do you notice about the lady? Smile. Why would someone in that situation, look at the water. Why would she be smiling? That looks like chocolate milk or coffee going into her jugs. Why would she be smiling? I told Doug yesterday, there is a word that we as a society here living in the United States don't understand. And I don't mean that each of you don't understand this, but as a society we don't. And that's the word being content. Because in our situation, we look at that and we should be sad, crying, angry. She shouldn't smile because she doesn't have what we have. But in reality, she's content with what she has, even if what she has is not what we think is acceptable. But how much are we driven by society, TV, that says, you want to be happy? Get this. Oh, that's not good enough. You got to get the new model, right? Because if you have an old model, you're, you're not good. Because we don't know what it is to be content because our happiness, for the most part, is found in what we have not in what we, what we don't have. I mean, excuse me, our happiness is found in what we don't have, so we st <coughs> strive for it. Sorry. But she's happy. 
But that's her water every single day. But here's what we did yesterday. We walked to provide that. You know God's given us clean water. Even without going through all the purification systems that we have in America and all the pipes and all the chlor chlorination and all that, water that comes from the ground is pure enough to drink. Now, we probably would not like it because it's not Dasani. It's not Fiji. It's not whatever. But that water is clean, and God's provided it. So we get water, and it's clean. When you first see water, now this makes me think about the splash pad yesterday, uh, the water park. Uh, I love watching kids around water because yesterday after we got, well, we didn't even get one lap in. They're already going to the water park. Uh, but I just love watching. But in parts of the world where they first get a well, the first thing they do, they don't drink it. They get wet. I was in Haiti, and these kids came out, and they got their hands wet, and they're doing this, and they started tossing it in the air and letting it come down like rain. And they were saying rain in, in Creole, and they're just tossing it up. Ladies, men would come over and wash their hands and wash their feet. They would let the water run. We had one lady. Now, I can say this for now because uh, we are in North Carolina, so I'm not going to separate us between uh, Blue Devils and Tar Heels and Wolf Pack, okay, because they're all bad. We'll just call it equal. Uh, but I am a Florida State Seminole fan, so, all right, so we're, I'm, in, I'm in territory. But we can agree with this. This lady was wearing a Florida Gators hat. No Gators, okay? They don't deserve clean water in my mind. <laughs> this lady's wearing a Florida Gator hat. Now, she's from Haiti. I guarantee you, it's like all those national championship shirts, like... Um, <laughs> well, it's like this year, you know, all the North Carolina basketball championship shirts that say... Oh, wait, Kansas won. So those shirts that say North Carolina have now been shipped to another country that have already printed. So these countries get all these shirts. They have no clue. I saw a kid wearing a Brett Favre jersey, and I'm like, you have no clue who Brett Favre is. But she's wearing a Florida Gators hat. And, and when I say this because I joke because she does deserve clean water. But she sat down, and I'm not a lady, and I obviously don't have hair that I work on every day. But she got down under that water. And how many of you want to get your hair wet after you've cleaned it for the day? She gets down and she takes her hat off and she just lets it run through her. And it just pours over her. She has a smile so big on her face because it's clean, pure water. Ingenious here. You're wondering what that is. That's a Coke bottle flipped upside down so they can funnel the water out into the... Normally they have containers that have little holes that they have to get their water into. But look at that little girl. Beautiful. I love the dress. But there's clean water. Clean water you can drink. So, let's talk about being hopeful. If you have your Bibles, I want you to flip to Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to look at verses 28 through 31. I'm reading out of the English Standard Version, but follow along in whatever version that you have. And let's just hear what the Bible says. Where do we find our hope? Where do we find our strength? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We understand that, don't we? Our strength is found ultimately in who? God. Would we understand that if we were in a situation like those people? I would like to say yes, I can say yes, but I have not experienced it, so I'm not going to put myself in their shoes. But when times get rough, because in life we go up and down, don't we? Everybody can sit here and say no matter what age we are, we have good days and we have bad days. We have good stretches and we have bad stretches. 
That's just part of being human. God never told us that following him was going to make life all rosy, did he? Sometimes we think people tell us that and the world says, oh, if you follow God, then everything's good. That's not what he says. But what he does tell us is found right in these verses that we have hope to know that our God never grows weary. He renews our strength. He gives us that hope that we can look to. So when we see the words hope full, we automatically think our hope is full because of Christ. And you know what we're doing through all those things I mentioned with the, the Hunger to Harvest, the Women of Hope program, the clean water, the, the relief, the thing we're going is that we realize that when we provide physical hope, we're also giving them hope that they have no understanding of, and that's the hope that's found in Christ. And then our goal is to fill them so that they are full, hope full, not only for tomorrow and today, but for eternity. And God gives us to us. And that is, that's why I want you to think, and we're going to ask this question a little bit, so I'm going to tell you again, think about what hope means to you. Because in a second, you're going to, get, you're going to have to do a little uh, answering. And I made, a, I made a typo here. It's Romans 15, 13. If you read 18, you're going to be like, that makes no sense. Romans 15, 13. This is the verse that totally sums up our walk. I did. God made this verse. I found the verse after the theme was thought. But look at how this fits so well with the theme, hopeful. Romans 15, 13. So really just ignore the screen behind you. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit in you may abound in hope. I want to read another translation. It's from the Christian Standard Bible because it really encapsulates this whole hopeful. But listen to how it says it, this word. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe so that you may overflow with hope. What does it mean to overflow? Has anybody ever had their toilet or their tub overflow? That's not a good thing, is it? But, but imagine just the abundance that comes out, and you're like, please stop, and it just keeps coming. For us, that's what the hope that God gives us overflows in us. Do you know what the problem is, though? Is that what blocks us from letting that hope reign in our life? Is it God? No, but it's ourselves. We want to try to block out hope, knowing where it's found, knowing that God is the provider of hope. But guess what? We have these things inside our head called brains. And we start thinking, and we start doing it our way, and we start doing things our way, and it blocks that hope. But ultimately, that hope overflows because Christ... And that's what's amazing. That's what we want to... That's the goal of Healing Hands International is to provide the physical needs so that they can be filled with hope. Our actual motto, not motto, mission statement, motto sounds crazy. Mission statement says, our goal is to aid, equip, and empower those in need around the world so that they may experience God's healing grace. Aid, equip, and empower. And I'll get back to that in a little bit as we close out. So Romans 15, 13. So just cut off half of that eight and you'll remember that verse. So let me ask you this. What does hope mean to you? Let's just take a second here and, and, and just throw out what does hope mean to you? Because I think it's defined differently for all of us. And I think it's defined differently in our situation we might find ourselves in. So I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to ask you a question after that. Or I'm going to not ask you a question. I'm going to put a hypothetical situation for you. So what does hope mean to you? Don't be shy. Spiritual joy. Spiritual joy. I like that. I'll toss off you. I, I actually used, uh, five years ago, I asked some of my friends, I was preaching at church back home, and I said, what does hope mean to you? And one of them wrote back and said that hope is like a rope. That on some days when life is going tough, you grab onto and you hold onto it tightly. But on other days, when things are good, you barely got your hand just holding onto that rope. But it's always there. What does hope mean to you? 
the reason. What is it we hope for? Or, let, let me say that. What is our hope based on? Because it's not we're hoping for something. But what is our whole existence? Our hope is found in Christ. But we know where we're going to be forever. Where's that? Heaven. So it's not like we hope to get to heaven or we hope for heaven. It's not like we wish it would happen. It's there. It is a hope that we hold on to. Our problem with the word hope is this. Have you ever said, I hope it doesn't rain today? There's a chance it might. Or how about this? I hope for Christmas I get X, Y, Z. We've all been guilty of that, haven't we? Or if you were like me as a student, I hope I passed that test. Uh, so our definition of hope is more of not of an assurance, it's of a, I, of a wish or a thinking. But the hope that we have in Christ is not a wishful thinking, it's an assurance, isn't it? Yeah. There's two different hopes. We have a hope for us as, as people on earth, but the hope, the main hope we should have is in Christ. If we fulfill the hope we have in Christ, we will be. There is no I hope I make it. You will make it. But yeah. our earthly hope is one thing, like you're talking about tests, Christmas, whatever. I had a lot of transplant, and I sure hoped I got one and I did think so. But but that's a different kind of hope than what you're talking about. And that's where we have to shift our brains and say, our hope is found in Christ, and that's what we build our whole belief system around. That's what we build our whole joy around, uh, is that hope. I want to go, and I don't have these two up on the screen, but I want to read two verses, two verses to you. 1 Peter chapter 1, 3-9. This really sums up what we're talking about here. 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you may have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ." Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. That verse is so powerful. We don't have a dead hope. We have a living hope. Just a, well, now we're getting close to a month ago, we celebrated the holiday what? Big thing where most people get bunnies and baskets. What's that holiday? Easter. Is it really about the bunnies and the baskets? What is it we celebrate today? And it shouldn't just be on Easter Sunday, but what is it we celebrate? The resurrection of Christ. Because you know what? If he would not have rose from the dead, we would have no hope. He would be another man that came and said something. But because our Lord and Savior came to this earth, died and rose again, our hope is cemented. It's a living hope. And that's where we rest our salvation. That's where we rest our minds to know that whatever we go through. So let me say this to you. Imagine you're sitting in a subway station in Ukraine about two months ago. And outside, the world literally is shaking because you're getting bombed. Because that's a reality that is not a hypothetical situation. And there you are sitting with a group of Christians. And you start singing praises to your, to your God. Because they know what that hope means. You are sitting in a... You're not sitting in. You're sitting outside under a tree in, in Africa. Hotter than it is today. No church building. You may have a wooden uh, log that's turned, carved into a, a pew-looking seat. No pads. 
you just got up this morning and you walked to get your water down at the river, but you know that right now that water lower is getting lower and lower and lower, and you know that the water you're getting is making you sick, but without it you can't live. But you come to church on a Sunday morning and you sit down and you worship God and you sing praises to Him because you know that there is hope. And God doesn't say that hope is found in, in everything we're going to experience here on earth. That hope is for eternity. That's what it means to have hope. I don't wish that any of you have trials. I don't. I wish no one goes through trials. But I can guarantee you this, we're going to have trials. So that's where our hope is found. You know, this is how I want to close out, and then I'm going to, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit more about some stuff about healing hands, but for the Bible part of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. If you want to flip over there, this is one of my favorite passages. This is why we do what we do as... as I, I've kind of shifted from saying Christians much, and I like to say followers of Christ. This is, this is what our motto should be. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Paul is talking here in this passage, so he's the I. But he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Here's what I want you to understand. What we did yesterday, what you do on a daily basis is planting seeds. You are planting seeds. You do that because you want others to know about the hope that you have in Christ, that they can experience that same hope. So you plant seeds, whether that's helping someone out, your neighbor, whether that's inviting something to church, whatever that is, you do those things because you love the Lord and you want to, you want to be a follower of His. So you plant and you plant and you plant. But you know what? There's others that water that. But look at what the answer to the whole thing is. Who gives the increase? God. We live in a world, um, if I want a TV today, I can go to this store and buy a TV, can I not? If I go into that store and I want to get my TV, I expect to walk out of that store with my TV and walk home and turn it on, correct? That's the world we live in. If I go to McDonald's, I want it fast, correct? I don't want to wait. That's why I went to McDonald's. We live in a world, I don't want to wait for the oven to cook, so I'll put my food in the microwave. We like things instant. We want to see instant results. Here's the thing I want you to know is that we may never see the results of the seeds we plant, but we've got to have trust to know that what we do, God's going to increase that in His time. And we may never see the result. So there's a lot of times that we don't know what the results of or every well or every garden or every women of uh, empowerment project or every magi box. We don't know the results. But we do know this. God is working. And every once in a while we get stories back from where a community had a well put in or an agricultural training was done. And there... God was working, and we see instant results. But we may not see those results, but we always got to trust that whatever we do, and so that's why I love this. And I'll tell you one last story about Magi, because you guys just did Magi last year. Ah, and this, this story is kind of a, it's not, it, let me preface this. We don't do this with every box, but when boxes are filled, they come into Nashville, and then they're, they're looked through. A lot of people will come in and volunteer. They'll flip open the box, say, oh, it's got what it needs, close the box. Sometimes they flip a box open. It may have like six pairs of underwear and five bars of soap, and it's overflowing. And so we're like, okay, let's redistribute to a box that may need it so the box will close. And sometimes you open up a box, and you're like, okay, uh, we literally got a box one time that had duct tape and a wooden snake in it and some clothes, clothes pins. Good stuff for somebody, but that obviously is not... So, you know, we... And a lot of times they flip open the box, it looks good, they set it down, and it's processed, we put it in, it's ready to go ship. One of our volunteers in there flips open a box, and there's a note. And for whatever reason, I guess it was like, hey, that's encouraging. Somebody put a note in their box. What did they write? Maybe for an idea. Reads the note, and in this note, it says, Hi, I'm Coach Ron. I have three boys who are ages XXX. My boys love soccer. I coach soccer. This box was going to Honduras, um, or was going to a Spanish-speaking country, because of how I wrote. He said, when my boys were young, their mother passed away. 
But through soccer, they've, and he goes on this whole thing. So then he says, inside of his box, he had a soccer ball. And that soccer ball, he said, I hope that this soccer ball you will enjoy on the pitch. Pitch is soccer field. And one day, maybe you and I can play on the pitch together in heaven. What a note. Sincerely, Coach Ron. Lady gets the note and says, goes to our Magi director, Cindy, at the time, and says, you got to read this. She reads it. It's written on a church stationery. On the back of that is the name of the church in Chesterfield, Virginia. So Cindy, being Cindy, picks up the phone and calls the office at Chesterfield in Southwest, Southwest Church and says, hey, is there a Coach Ron? Because that's all we had. Yes, there is a Coach Ron. Let me back it up, though. We took that box. We don't do this with every box. And we said, this is a special box. We want to take this and... And this is just something special. So I took the box first with me to, the, to Mexico, down to the Texas-Mexico border. I have this box. I got a lot of pressure with me. This box has a special note. has a soccer ball. They said, Sean, find somebody and hand them this box. I never had the opportunity. So I brought the box back. So they packed it in their suitcase and took it to Honduras. There they met a preacher. Preacher said, I know exactly who I need to give this box to. I've been studying with my, my nephew, Alexander, and we're just not getting anywhere. There's not a connection. Can I try? Can this box be a way to do it? Gives the box to Alexander. So we have a picture of Alexander receiving the box from his uncle. We find out a month later that Alec, we get a picture back from Honda. Alexander is in the river being baptized. So now we have connected with this church. We go to we were in Richmond for something. We go an hour over to Southwest Church of Christ and meet Coach Ron and present him. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You guys will get this about church. When church ends, the final amen today, how many of you are gone out the door? Poof. That's the typical Church of Christ across America. As soon as the amen's done. I was supposed to get up and to share this story with the congregation, but they forgot. The, the person doing closing announcements didn't give me the opportunity to come up. So, they say, amen, Woo, half the congregation's gone. The preacher, and I'll never forget, the preacher is probably like 6'6". Six, six. This is a massive guy. He's in the back. Stop, stop. And it's now I feel real awkward. i got to get in front of like the few chosen that are stuck that have been blocked into the congregation. They sit back down. The congregation knew Ron. Ron had been there for years. They knew his wife. There wasn't a dry eye in that congregation. And I'll tell you that there was sad tears because it was joy. So you never know what your impact can be, whether that's through Walk for Water, Magi, or whatever else you do. Always know that God is going to give you the increase or give the increase of what you do if you trust in that. And as we go out, just tell people about the hope you have. Just tell them about the hope you have. All right, that is, is that the first or second? That's the second bell. Man, I didn't even hear the first bell. Look at that. We are done. If you want them, I have some of these in the back. These are our 2021 annual report. It just reviews what we are, some of the highlights of 2021, some of the financial. I'm going to leave these in the back for you to read more about Healing Hands. And uh, now enjoy some fellowship before we worship.